Today I am filming my visit to Matthausen concentration camp here in Upper Austria and it, it was one of the first Nazi concentration camps and it was the last one to be liberated by the Allies. This is the main entrance over here and I visited the uh, visitor center first to get a map and to get some information useful information so I would suggest if you visit this place you visit the concert the visitor center just right next to the parking lot and if I'm not mistaken the parking lot is free and also the admission is free as well they give you a map and also there is an audio uh, guide as well and this camp operated from August 8, 1938 until May 5th, 1945 and the United States Army liberated this uh, camp on May 5th, 1945 so I will just uh, go for a walk here and share with you what I see I may not provide uh, useful information in this video so the purpose of this video is just to walk around this camp and let you uh, get a sense of what this uh, place is like and here is the entrance to the barracks and this is where I'm gonna start and the memorial is over there up there and if you're planning to drive um, this concentration camp is about a half an hour drive from Linz Linz is a major uh, town major city I should say in Austria it's spelled L-I-N-Z it's a beautiful city it's about half an hour drive from this concentration camp and if you're planning to take a, a public transportation you can take a bus bus number 361 direct bus all the way to the memorial site so uh, I'm not sure where I should uh, begin but we will uh, keep uh, we will keep walking because I think you can enter one of those barracks and see the uh, see what they look like from inside I visited the uh, Dachau concentration camp last year in November 2021 you can check out that video Dachau concentration camp was the first Nazi concentration camp in this particular camp concentration camp about 190,000 inmates were held here and they were forced to work as uh, slave labor and there are uh, very extreme uh, conditions that caused many deaths and about uh, 90,000 inmates uh, were uh, were killed in this uh, in this camp 90,000 people not sure what uh, where that will uh, take me to so like I said if you're watching this video it will just give you a uh, a taste of what this uh, place is like so when you visit next time you know what uh, where to go
so after the war cemeteries uh, were created on this site and mass graves in the mass graves were uh, were buried here in this uh, location so now let's go to the uh, to the one of the barracks and uh, go inside but the problem that I might face now is when I go inside the room might be dark and my camera will may not uh, perform well so the uh, the image quality may not be that good so if that happens uh, just forgive me because I'm trying my best to film in low light situation and the camera that I am using now is GoPro 9 may not be uh, a good camera in a low light uh, situation so we will go now to barracks number 9 and we will explore uh, that barrack from inside and I am visiting this uh, particular place to learn the dark history of this uh, country and about uh, three weeks ago I was in another uh, sub camp sub camp called Ibn Z concentration camp in Ibn Z uh, town in Austria so basically those uh, sub camps uh, were used to uh, to hold inmates that were working as a slave labor and here is the uh, first barracks that is open to the public to explore and we will go there now we'll go see it from inside this is barrack number one the first one on your left side when you enter this uh, this area Okay, and then the next one is also open to the public. I'm not sure if these are the original barracks or their replica, because in, in Dachau concentration camp, the original ones were destroyed. But I'm not sure if these here are the original ones or not. So this is the second barracks that is open to the public. The first one was over there. And now let's see uh, this one. So these barracks were designed to accommodate 300, 300 inmates, but uh, there were about 2,000 inmates in each uh, barracks which is quite uh, a lot imagine 2000 people were held here so definitely the condition was very very horrible that caused many many deaths This is barrack number six. This was the washroom.
So I'm going to try to let you read what I read here right now. In case you are uh, interested, you can pause the, uh, the video and read. This is the uh, living area. Yeah, you can try to pause and uh, and read whenever I point the camera on the information. You can read it. So the living area was the only room that could be heated in many barracks only the block personnel were allowed to use it. Wow. So I would imagine in the winter the uh, I'm not sure how they could overcome the the frozen, the freezing weather. And this is the sleeping area. I think they removed the, the beds. It was cramped with bunk beds. So they have a picture here to show you what it was like in this particular room. This picture was taken in June 1945, just right after it was liberated. This was a testimony from one of the inmates that survived over here. You can pause it and read it for yourself. So let's go now to the to the other to the other room. So I entered two barracks right now. The first one right on the left side. The second one and the third one just right before the cemetery is also open to the public barrack number 11 they go by numbers just in case uh, you want to uh, you want to explore it and also keep in mind that they give you a, a map with information like this one this is what I'm doing right now to read some uh, important facts as I am exploring the these barracks so make sure you go to the visitor center just right after you arrive here and pick one for free barracks number 11 the living conditions in the barracks varied greatly according to the area and date the children and young people housed in barracks 11 experienced relatively good conditions prisoners housed in other camps areas which are no longer standing had to cope with much harsher circumstances This is a washing room.
This is another testimony from one of the uh, prisoners. I'm trying to avoid the glare. There is a reflection on the, because of the sun um, reflecting on the glass. So I'm trying to avoid that. But there is no way to avoid it. All newly delivered prisoners had to spend an initial period of the quarantine. The living conditions there were even more severe than in Camp 1. These barracks, which were des designated for 300 people, sometimes housed up to 2,000 prisoners. So I get out of barrack number 11. Now I'm not sure what that building on the right side is is for. And that is the the last building on this side. We will go see. It seems that it's open to the to the public as well. But I don't see it on the on the map that I am carrying, we will go now and uh, and see what that is. This seems to be the museum over here. I'll let you uh, let you read it. So you can spend uh, you can spend quite a, a lot of time here to read and this is exactly what I am going to do after I finish filming because I need to read and spend almost I'm gonna spend about two hours if you go downstairs it says the crime scenes of Matt Housen Search, searching for traces so it's really a huge huge place to uh, to navigate and read so downstairs is also the uh, killing area the uh, crematoriums and the gas chamber will be in this uh, area so I'm gonna go walk up ahead and I think that's where the, those uh, rooms are so right now I am entering the former killing area and the memorial rooms so this is the if I'm not mistaken this is the, the gas chamber this, uh, located here it's horrible horrible dark history it's really depressing when when you see these uh, places how did this happen? Horrible things happened. So, uh, 
he says that two of the three ovens uh, survived. So what you see here are the original ones that uh, survived. And the third one, I'm not sure what happened uh, to it. Here, here is the here is the the description. There it says third crematorium oven. And this is the memorial room with all the names. Uh, it's called Room of Names. So in the weeks before liberations, this room was used to store prisoners' corpses. Today, 81,000 dead of Mauthausen concentration camp and its subcamp who are known by name are listed here so I'm gonna try to walk very slowly because the room is dark no light and my camera does not uh, do well but there seemed to be another room up ahead I'm not quite sure what that is we will go now and and see it I think the room that you see over there is the former gas chamber. This is the former gas chamber over here. This is where thousands of people died here. Between March 1942 and the end of April 1945, at least 3,455 people were murdered in the gas chamber using poison gas here. Three thousand four hundred fifty five people died in this room. I'm going to point the camera here and you can pause and read for yourself over here. dressing room this is the end dressing room in this room prisoners were made to undress and undergo an examination for gold teeth before they were killed just get out of the gas chamber room and it takes me out to this uh, spot and I'm not sure what the next building is this is to the roll the roll call area Prison 
courtyard was isolated from the main prisoners camp some shootings were carried out here the courtyard also served as an assembly point for prisoners about to be killed in the gas chamber sure if this is another gas chamber or not but uh, let's see what the uh, what does it say the call for the first crematorium oven was stored here from 1942 onwards it was used as accommodation for the prisoners who operated Operated these uh, horrible things. This is the uh, the first uh, crematorium oven. This oven started operating in May 1940. It was used in constant use until the liberation of the uh, of the camp. This is bigger than uh, that cow concentration camp. I haven't visited the one in Poland, but I might visit that soon as well. So what is this home? In this room, the SS had autopsies performed on the corpses as as doctors also dissected corpses for training purposes yourself to see what this room was for so basically it was equipped with a cooling mechanism so the corpses were stored here This is the second crematorium oven. In the opposite corner of the room, the SS had a second crematorium oven built in May 1942. The oven was dismantled after liberation. The foundation strips and the chim chimney opening are the only traces still available. What does it say here? You can read it. Wow, from 1942 onwards, prisoners sentenced to death 
were hanged from an iron cross beam positions below the glass roof. Over there, right here, you see? Horrible crimes were committed here. And thousands of people died here. Okay, I get out of the crematorium room. It's a really depressing place to, to visit, to be quite honest with you. But, uh, like I said, I'm here to learn the dark history. So this video may, uh, may depress you as well. And this is the bunker, the camp prison. The bunker was built in 1939-1940. It was used to deta detain prisoners who had violated camp regulations. Many prisoners were tortured by the SS in the bunker or taken from here to be executed. So let's go uh, see. Let's go see the bunker. Here is the bunker. Over here. They don't allow me to get in. The door is uh, is locked. And what is this room for? I'm not sure what this room is for. There is no description. There is no information at all to describe what this room is. As you can see, a lot of uh, messages on the wall, a lot of uh, writings on the wall. And here is some information about that. It says over the decades, visitors have left behind messages on the wall of Matt House Memorial in the form of gravity. So basically, what you see on the wall here, were written by visitors like me. I'm gonna point the camera here. I found really, really important information that you might need to pause the video and read. So the bunker is really huge. This is the other side. Earlier we saw, we saw the one over here. So it's really, really huge. So let's get out now and see what uh, what's next to uh, to visit. So that that was the bunker, and now I'm going this way. But before I go this way, let's see. Let's see if I go take this stairs where it's gonna take me. I think it's gonna take me to the main uh, barracks that I already explored. You already saw that part, the barracks. 
you really saw the barracks and the cemeteries and the main entrance up there and this room is not open to the public I would assume let's, uh, let's then get back to where I wanted to where I was planning to go I was planning to go this way because I have not explored this uh, part yet it's a really huge uh, huge place and by the way um, I visited the rally grounds uh, in Nuremberg that place was the uh, the place that Hitler used to uh, to go for his rallies it's called the rally ground and that was in Nuremberg so I visited that last year you can check out that video as well you see I don't think I I entered this room so let's go and see what this room is for I see a bunch of uh, uh, flags inside inside this uh, this room see when I, when I enter when I go indoors I switch my uh, camera settings to light uh, mode to a uh, night mode to see if it's gonna handle low light situation wow what is this for I see a bunch of uh, flags here I don't see any uh, description in English here here we go I see yeah I see uh, yeah, Great Britain in memory of those who suffered here and in tribute to their sacrifice for their country. Okay, now where is the United States? Over here. United States of America. In memory of the American prisoners who did not survive to be liberated by their fellow countrymen. Yeah, see the uh, the other countries. There is no uh, description in English, so I just see English description for uh, Britain, Great Great Britain, and the United States. But uh, I see uh, Israel flag here, but no English description over here. The description is not in English. Okay, and now I see that there is a stairs downstairs over here, but it's not uh, actually open to the public here. I'm not sure what that is, but it's uh, it's closed. Maybe. Uh, Maybe I can enter it from from this side because I see people going downstairs. You see those people are going downstairs. And this is the main entrance where I just entered. So let's go downstairs and see what this uh, 
room is for. I think this is a laundry. A laundry barracks here. This is a laundry barracks and a disinfection room. find my way back to the entrance and I see another part here that I don't want to miss and if you visit this place do not miss this part and it's called the garage yard and it was used by the SS for uh, celebrations and has an assembly area for inmates I'm not sure what that means, but that's what the, the the description says. The official description that I see on the on the uh, on the guide that I am carrying right now. And if you keep walking. It will take you back to the visitor center. I'm not sure if I can walk upstairs to one of those uh, towers. I can see that I can uh, walk here. Is it open? No, it's actually closed. You cannot. You cannot do that. You cannot walk upstairs to go to those uh, to go to those uh, towers. Okay, back again to the entrance, and uh, let's see what this room is for well there is nothing here the door is closed here and there is a vending machine for drinks and snacks and coffee Horrible crimes were committed here and last year I visited Nuremberg courtroom and that's where the trial took place to prosecute those Nazi officials who committed uh, those crimes so if you visit Germany and you happen to be close to Nuremberg I highly recommend you visit the courtroom of Nuremberg. I have a video of that as well. For now, uh, have a wonderful day and see you in my next videos.